What's up, everybody? I'm B True, and recently, the past couple of days, ever since the hurricane, my internet has been super, super uh, sketchy. It's been going in and out like crazy. I can hardly even keep Naruto Online open for more than five, ten minutes at a time before it kicks me off. Um, so as that kind of fixes it, its way out, um, this video, I plan on making this video anyway, just so you guys know. Uh, but if you see, you're gonna see like background footage from pre-recorded videos in the background so don't freak out don't worry about what's going on in the background it's a, a previous video because I can't keep Naruto online open long enough to actually record any footage right now but anyway so today we are going to talk about what makes Death Note the movie so horrible now those of you uh, who watched the video might remember last week I made a video or it was two weeks ago I guess because of the hurricane right yeah so two weeks ago I made a video uh, that was titled, What Makes Death Note So Awesome? And I had binge-watched the entire series in two days, and I talked about what made the show so awesome, in my opinion, and what really makes people gravitate towards it and love it. Well, over the weekend, I watched Death Note, the movie, and I decided I wanted to make a video about what makes why, well, what makes the movie so horrible. Why do people hate the movie the way that they do when they love the anime so much, right? So, in order to talk about why Death Note the movie sucks. We got to talk about what made the anime so great. This is going to be just a real quick recap of the last video that I made. So basically, in my opinion, there are two things that really carry the anime that make it such a strong anime um, that keeps you invested in it and makes you keep coming back for more and makes you love the show. The first is the strength of the two main characters, the hero and the and in the the I can't even call it like a hero, the protagonist and the antagonist because there isn't really like a hero and a because I go into that in the other thing. But the strength of the characters, Light and L. The, both of them are so interesting as characters. And they, they feed off each other. They're so yin, yin to yang on each other um, that it really carries the show through. You root for both of these characters. And you're going to naturally gravitate towards one or the other. But um, you, you, love, you fall in love with these characters. And the characters... The development around these two characters and their battle is so strong uh, that it really carries the show. Like that is what you look forward to: is these two super genius characters that are just smarter than everybody else, um, and the interactions that they have, and the whole, the whole, just everything about those two characters. Right. The second thing that really carries the show, and this feeds off of the first point, is the intellectual chess battle that goes on between them. Like I said, they're both super geniuses. They're crazy smart. They, they both almost have a hard time relating to the rest of the world. Light, not so much, but L, definitely, um, because of how smart they are. They're just so much smarter than everybody else. Uh, and it's almost like a psychological thriller of these two characters battling back and forth, both scheming and trying to plan off of what the other person, what they think the other person is going to do, and try and counter that move. And so the strength of the two of the two characters that you fall in love with and then their battle, their intellectual chess battle of knowing who each other is but not being able to accomplish their goals anyway and trying to maneuver around the system to get their, their, their goals accomplished, those are the two things that really drive the anime that make you want to keep coming back. So what makes Death Note the movie so horrible then? They had this formula, right? They, they had a perfect formula to stick to. And what did they change that really ruined the experience? Well, my opinion, they got rid of the two things that made the anime so awesome. The two things that I just mentioned that made the anime so amazing were not in the movie. The movie changed the two most important things that you love about the movie. It's like if they made a Dragon Ball Z movie, which they already did, which fucking blew, by the way. But it's like it's like if they made a live action Dragon Ball Z movie where Goku wasn't a Saiyan. He was just a human who knew karate. It'd be horrible. It would be horrible. Anyway, so Death Note changed both of the main characters. Both of the main characters, and I'm not talking about um, not being Chinese or anything like that. I don't care about that. I don't care. I don't care that L's black. I don't care that Light's white. I, I don't care. None of that matters to me. What I care about are their personality traits, right? The, the personality traits are what makes you gravitate toward the character. So in the movie, let's, let's talk about the anime. In the anime, Light is um, he's 
extreme, especially after he gets the book, he's extremely sociopathic, right? He does not care about anybody else. He will use any and everybody as a means to an end as long as he's able to accomplish his goals. Um, he's also incredibly smart, a little hot-headed at times. He can let his, um, his emotions get the better of him, as you see in the show a couple of times. There are a couple key moments where his emotions uh, get the better of him, and then he eventually calms back down. Um, and, and resets himself, and he's a genius. He is extremely smart, and he's able to plan um, many, many steps ahead, right? So in the movie, Light does not feel like a genius whatsoever. Not at all. He doesn't, he doesn't feel like, okay, so they show him doing math homework in the beginning of the movie, but that's it. What other characteristics does he have that makes him a genius? They hardly ever show him planning ahead, only at the end of the movie does he do anything that even remotely uh, resembles the show with him doing these elaborate plans and schemes. He, just, he doesn't feel very, very intellectual. He doesn't feel like a genius, right? They, they took away his biggest strength of the anime. Um, he also is very childish. He acts very childish a lot. I mean, he is overly emotional, not in a... a hot tempered kind of way which he does in the the movie a couple times but he does that in the anime as well but he also is just he like i said he feels like a child in this movie he doesn't feel like a controlling sociopath who is running the world the way that he wants to he feels like this child who was given this power and doesn't know how to use it he doesn't know how to how to continue you know he, he like i said he feels like a child Last but not least, um, he's not controlling or sociopathic, and it ends up with him cowering in tough situations. So in the show, at no point did he mind sacrificing any and everybody near him. He sacrificed his own father in the sh in the, the show uh, just to to try and figure out who or to try and kill Mello, who he thought was the last person standing in his way. He did not care about anybody. He was willing to kill his sister. He was willing to kill his uh, girlfriend. All of his, any of his girlfriends, um, everybody. He was willing to to kill everybody. And in the the movie, he is um, extremely dumbed down. He he cowers in tough situations. He's unable to make um, the calls. He's not sociopathic at all. He actually cares about other people, which leads to him being a completely different character. You don't get the the whole bad guy like sort of a villain feel from him. You just feel like this this child that's going around killing people and it, it completely ruins his character entirely completely ruins his character so now let's talk about l l is still odd absolutely and he's still a genius you can tell that he is a genius uh by the way that he talks the things that he says he's out there planning he has those same character traits right same exact thing however however he's extremely emotional in the show l never shows emotion ever i mean he is as cold and as calculated as it comes he also was willing to sacrifice any and everybody as long as it meant achieving his goal of what he thought was justice and that was catching kira um in the in the show he is very actually very frequently either shown upset um whether he's sad angry he goes off the rails a few times um with, a te with his temper, like losing his control with his temper. Uh, he's, they show him crying. He's angry. Literally, he shows every spectrum of emotion that he never once showed in the anime. He's a completely different character because of those things. Though, and like in the show, they made a, a basis for why you need to be unemotional and calculating, right? So after L dies, when they have Mello and Nier are to be his successor. And the reason they choose Nier is because Mello was too emotional. He was too hot-headed. He let his emotions control his thoughts, whereas Nier was the same way as L, where he was just cold and calculating. They literally cover that in the show, and the movie just completely disregards all of that. And they make him super emotional. They make him irrationally connected to Watari uh, in the movie, and, and it leads to him making a bunch of mistakes, and it's just... It, it doesn't you don't feel like it's l that's not the character that you follow you fall in love with in the show um and like i said he just he makes a lot of really irrational decisions based on his emotions it, 
not based on his deductive reasoning like he does in the show. And because of those two things, um, they're not, they, they just aren't the two characters that you fell in love with with the show. They're not at all. And it, it's really, really upsetting. Um, and you don't, you don't feel anything for these characters. And that's like one of the, you just don't have a connection to these characters, these characters you fell in love with in the show. And so, like I said, that was like the number one thing about the show that was amazing was the two characters. And the movie changed everything about them that made them who they were. And you don't feel like you're watching the same characters. The second, and again, extremely important point here, there's practically no intellectual chess battle in this show at all. Or in the movie, I should say, in the movie. In the show, it's like episode five where the chess battle starts. And it goes on for the entire rest of the show. I mean, you're talking 30-some episodes of chess battle. In the movie, next to zero chess battle whatsoever. They don't ever come out and, and there's no intellectual games back and forth where they're planning there's maybe maybe one or two times in the entire movie that I can think of where they had any kind of like intellectual battle and it was stupid it, it didn't there was no payoff to it like when um when L confronted light in the uh, in the shop when he was or in the the store when he was eating light didn't even try and and they, did, they didn't have the famous scene from the anime where they have, like, the deductive reasoning battle back and forth. Light just basically comes out and says, like, yeah, I'm Kira. What are you going to do about it? Because I'm doing the right thing. And I was like, no, you're going to get caught. They don't have any. There's no, there's no fight, intellectual fight between them. There's no chess battle. There's no cat and mouse game going back and forth where one person gets the upper hand and then the other person tricks them and gets the upper hand, you know, going back and forth and back and forth. And you're not exactly sure how it's going to play out. None of that happens in the movie. The whole driving storyline of the anime is wiped out in the movie. It, it, it's it's horrible. I mean, they they skip the entire thing and like the entire draw that keeps you watching, clicking on the next episode of um, of the Death Note anime is these schemes and these plans and trying to figure out, oh God, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? Well, the movie didn't have that. The movie didn't have that draw of what is going to happen next. You don't even care what's going to happen next because nobody, there's no, there's no chess battle. There's no suspense. There's no, there's no wondering. There's no cat and mouse. Like I said, it's just very, very straightforward and plain and that takes away the biggest storyline mover of the anime. So you take away their strong characters and you take away the storyline that made it amazing. And what are you left with? You're left with a shitty Netflix rendition of a great show that if somebody hadn't watched the show and they watched that movie, they would never watch the show. They would say, this is so stupid. This is absolutely ridiculous. There's no way I'm going to watch this. Um, and that, that for me, like ruined the whole experience. Everything that I went into the movie hoping to see, I didn't see any of it. Um, I know a lot of people were kind of upset about the whole, the way the whole love interest worked out, uh, and the internal like strife between the two of them. I don't mind the, the love interest part of it at all. I don't, except for the fact that it takes up so much time that I feel like they focused more on the love interest than, and they had to cut out the entire intellectual chess battle. And that's what I think is the problem. I think that they, they spent so much time trying to develop this love connection and focus on these two as a couple that they didn't have any time to do any of the back and forth chess battle between Light and L and they they chose to get rid of the main draw of the storyline and replace it with romance which is the worst decision they could have possibly made I mean that's why this movie is so shitty is because of that right there I would not have minded uh, the them having that whole love interest in there if they had the chess battle and everything else set up around it. Would not have had a problem with it. The only reason I do, like I said, is because it takes away from the stuff that we want to see, that we went into that movie um, to see. A couple other, you know, like little little gripes of mine. The way that Light showed her um, the Death Note was ridiculous. It was so stupid. I mean... In the, the show, he was willing to kill anybody who even thought that he had the Death Note. And in the movie, he gets the Death Note 
the cute girl says hi to him and he immediately takes her into a room and shows her that he can kill people. I call bullshit immediately. There's no way that if he had uh, the ability to kill somebody and he was a genius, right? Keep in mind, and he was a genius, that he would tell somebody that he didn't 100% completely know uh, was going to be okay with it, right? He had no idea how she was going to react. What if she ran out of that room screaming at that moment, right? She could have told anybody. He had no idea how she was going to react, and he just shows her that he can kill people. Like, it's th- th- it doesn't make any sense. They just expect you to take this huge leap of faith um, that he's going to show her and she's just going to be okay with it, and because of that, she's going to fall in love with him because he's doing the right thing. Um, he had no idea what her sense of justice was. He had no idea how she felt about these people, about him killing criminals. She, he had no idea. He never even asked her or tested her to see if she would agree with him. And uh, and that, that could have been an easy way for them to explain why he showed it to her so quickly. Is like maybe right before that he asked her, "Hey, you know, if a if a criminal dies, um, if a criminal dies and it saves a hundred people, like, are you okay with that?" There's really easy way that he could have like tested her first, but no, he just takes her in there and he just shows shows the book because he's trying to get some from the cute girl, and it, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It doesn't fit his character. That was like the first moment that I was just like bullshit. This is not the light that I know. This is not the light that I came to watch this movie for. Um, and I said that's really where it starts to go downhill quickly. It's from that moment on because then after that, all of the decisions that he and they make. They just don't really seem – they're not really seem plausible. The movie was turned more into like a, a a romance than it was a psychological thriller, and they changed the characters in order to fit the romantic theme and not what the show was about. And that's like – that's why people are so pissed off. That's why the movie is so – has such bad ratings, why people don't enjoy the movie because everything they went into it to see – isn't there and even if you hadn't watched the show there's just so many glaring weaknesses to the storyline like l doesn't really seem like much of a factor in the in the movie at all he's hardly he hardly does anything like he tells people that kira is the detective son and that's about it other than that he's like he's he's crying he's scared he's upset just all the time he's this emotional uh weird guy that nobody really listens to. He doesn't have that power. He doesn't have the control that he does in the show. And they just ruined it. They ruined it. They really had, uh, like I said, they had the blueprint laid out for them. They didn't need special effects. They didn't need, you know, like a huge budget. The, the show was entirely based around the two characters in the chess battle between them. You don't need any special effects for those two things. And... They had they had this golden Easter egg right there in front of them, and they just threw it away. They just took it, and they were just like, ah, fuck this, and they just threw it away. <sighs> oh, man. As you can tell, I was upset by the movie. I watched the movie because I wanted to see why people thought it was so bad, um, and I had to talk about it afterwards. So, Anyway, what did you guys think about the movie versus the show? If you, uh, if you haven't watched the what makes death note the anime awesome that video that i made two weeks ago i'll leave a link down in the description so you can check that out and kind of compare and contrast my thoughts on both of those together um but like i said it it was all it's the characters and the intellectual chess battle that made the anime amazing and it was the characters and the lack of internet inter intellectual chess battle that made the movie horrible so anyway hopefully i can get my internet fixed uh or figure out over the next couple days because it's going to be really hard for me to make any kind of Naruto online videos right now when I can't even keep the client open because it keeps disconnecting. Um, but I'm going to do my best, so hopefully we can get that figured out. I'm going to talk with my internet service provider today and get that hopefully figured out. Uh, hope you guys all have a great day. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching the whole way through this video. I know this isn't Naruto online related. It isn't what you guys normally watch, and these videos generally get less views. Um, but when I, when I get you know the feeling that i want to talk about something this is the best way to do it i can make videos for you guys i can get your thoughts on it we can have a conversation back and forth so i enjoy these videos i hope you do too thank you for watching the whole way through the video like i said uh it really helps with the whole youtube algorithm thing so you guys are awesome thank you so much hope you all have a great day and peace